Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in today's video I want to show you guys how I dome resin on top of polymer clay cabochons that you can see I have here a big batch. I've been working really hard trying to make as many cabs as I could because that way once I have these blanks ready I can go through and dome them and really bring to life the different techniques and mica shifts and colors and everything that are going on in these cabochons. So let's go ahead and get started. So here you can see my work surface is just a silicone baking mat. The resin won't stick to it, but then I also have tape placed sticky side up that is holding the cabochons in place. That way they don't slide around as I'm trying to dome them. Now over here you can see I have a batch that I've already done and I've had some leaking. And what happened is if you break the surface tension of your resin, it's going to leak out the edges. And I'll give you guys a closer look of this later whenever it's cured fully, but um, you can see just how it really, I mean, first off, that super high gloss shine. Some of them have some little air bubbles and pockets and stuff in them, but you can do a second resin pour over that. But just the way that they, they really come to life and it really makes them nice and shiny, whereas, you know, here you can see just the two from the same batch, actually, side by side, the difference in the way that they look. And whenever I have better lighting, um, I'll really show some side by side comparisons. But I'm actually going to be going through and touching up this one. The resin pulled away from itself, so I'm going to need to pour a little bit more in there. And we'll see how that works. But I don't want to touch them because it's only been about 16 hours. It hasn't been a full 24. But I'm going to get a batch of resin mixed up. I really like to use Art & Glow. Uh, it's very affordable and I'm having great results with it. But I also really enjoy Art Resin and a bunch of different... Um, I don't know, just about every epoxy that I've come across, so long as you follow the instructions, can get you really good results. So let's do this. I'm beginning by gloving up nice fresh clean gloves and then I'm going to mix equal parts of the hardener and the resin into, here I have just a calibrated cup, links to all the different tools and materials that I'm using will be down below. And I mixed about um, two ounces of both the hardener and the resin. I like to pour the resin first and then pour the hardener into it, but that's just my personal preference. And then I mix for a solid three minutes. Like, my arms get tired, but I mix it. I make sure to scrape the sides, the bottom, I scrape the resin off of the stick. I used to dump from a first mixing cup into a second mixing cup, but I've found, at least in smaller batches like this, that wasn't really necessary and I felt like I was burning through materials like crazy. So now that it's been mixed, um, on this one I'm not really bothering to let it sit to let bubbles rise because I need as much of my pot time used up. Uh, getting it transferred onto the cabochons because it is kind of careful and tedious work um, and so I'm just really carefully with the uh, craft stick getting a little bit of the resin on there and then shuffling it around like moving it uh, spreading it on the surface of the cabochon I don't want to get <clears throat> excuse me I don't want to get too close to the edges because if you break that surface tension um, it, your resin's going to start leaking off the edge. This Art & Glow is self-doming, which I think gives it a really nice effect of like just a nice rounded off surface. And um, it's slow work, but totally worth it. And my pot time, like Art Art & Glow says it has a 40 minute pot time, but I can really only get about 20 minutes before it starts heating up. And so I'm just going to, and here you can see Randy did a real good job working the camera, getting in um, a closer shot for you guys to see what we're doing. Sorry, it's a bit grainy. That's just the phone for you. But just kind of poking it a bit. <laughs> I mean, super high tech, uh, you know, terminology here. But yeah, I just poke it and get little, just a little bit at a time. You can always come back in and add more. But if you add too much, you're just going to get leaking. Like, I've not been able to find a clean and efficient way of removing excess resin to keep it from getting messy. 
And also too, if you don't put enough on, you can always come back in later and do a second casting because the nature of me doing this is um, <clears throat> I've got way more cabs to do more projects in the future. And out here you can see, especially on the pink ones, all the bubbles that are rising to the top. Don't worry about those, we'll get to them. Um, I'm just, I'm using as much, like I said, as much of my pot time to be able to uh, get the resin onto the cabochons as possible. So it's a pretty intense 20 minutes of just like super focused. And also the tape on the surface really makes a big difference in my ability to do this without the cabochons shifting around, especially the smaller ones. I didn't have as much of a problem without the tape on the larger cabs because the silicone itself kind of has like a non like a non-slip surface, but the small cabs didn't have enough surface area to grip to the silicone. Now I have learned my lesson though, uh, my limit for leaving the cabs on the tape is like three days, um, like preferably not more than two days, but the tape will react with some of the Sculpey colors and give us like a very sticky back, um, which sands off, but I feel like there's no sense in making more work for ourselves. And here you get just another perspective. I try to work in a way like whenever you're lighting candles on a birthday cake so that I'm trying really hard to not stick my arm in the resin that I've already done so I start by working away from me and then like starting farthest point away from me and then kind of working forward and then also from left to right the way that I would when I'm writing for y'all lefties out there or anybody who you know Randy's ambidextrous so it's just do it however you like this is just how I do it but um however I can get the fastest, most efficient result. That way I don't want to have to waste any of my resin. <clears throat> now it's been 20 minutes, so I'm co coming in on low with my heat gun. That's not low heat, that's low airflow because you don't want to come in with a like you know, an air compressor and blow your resin everywhere. But you can see how it kind of dissolves the, you know, all those little bubbles that have had 20 minutes to rise to the surface. It just pops them. You can come through and you can see them just kind of disappear and that makes me really happy. But the heat gun I've found is a lot less work on me than using like a lighter and I still haven't had the courage to light up a butane torch. Um, and so, uh, I don't know, heat gun works pretty good. This one I got for like 20 bucks at like Harbor Freight I think. But uh, I don't know if I'd recommend a hair dryer because I don't know if they get hot enough. But you could try it. This definitely lends itself to experimentation and you can see I had a little bit of leaking on a couple of them I, I probably shouldn't have put my cabs so close together but that's kind of how it goes and you can see here in this cup I still have quite a bit of resin so what I'm doing is I'm gonna go through and add this is a white glow pigment again links down in the video description and I'm just gonna tap in a bit I think I have these nice little scoops that are great for uh, kind of getting a controlled amount. And I found with the glow resin, I really like using quite a bit of it to get a nice solid glow. But they're very fine particulate, but uh, not quite as fine as like mica powder or something. So if you only put in a little bit and then stir it in, it'll give you like a speckled effect, which is really cool with the white if you're trying to do like a galaxy blend. So that's something that I'm going to try in a future tutorial um, is to do like, uh, you know, purples and blues and blacks and stuff, but with some white glow pigments in there, just enough to make it look like speckled stars and then stirring it very thoroughly. And again, at this point, I can feel the cup heating up quite a bit and it's like, so I'm, I'm like panicking a little bit. I try to keep myself from panicking, but, um, I'm like, I don't want to waste any of the resin, and if I let it set up for too long, the closer I get to that 40 minute pot time, uh, you know, deadline, the more bubbles I'm going to have in my work. Which is also kind of nice to use the glow pigments for because it doesn't make a perfectly translucent piece. And so now, here you can see I have the silicone molds that I am pouring this extra resin into, and I'm trying to only fill them up like halfway because I'm experimenting with some different color shifting. 
and that I feel like the end of the pot is so nice for experimenting because I don't feel like I'm wasting a big batch if it doesn't come out the way that I wanted you know it makes me feel like you know I'm at least getting I'm learning something so I got the original intent which was doming the cabochons taken care of so now I get to play a little bit And it also gives me a little bit of variety for uh, materials and stuff to work with. But just very carefully, you can see I love using the craft stick to kind of whoop, swipe it up and make sure that it, it stops when I need it to stop. Now I've added in some, uh, I think it's a black diamond brand, but it's like a turquoise mica powder. It's not a color shift, it's just super shimmery and pretty. Then I'm going through and I'm adding this in to... Uh, just focusing the pour in one area so that it tried, like, like spreads naturally and I'm doing a super thin stream getting it in to one end of the mold and you can see how it's kind of just blending on its own and this was the uh, blue the turquoise powder added in to what already had the glow pigments in it <clears throat> and so the whole thing still glows, which makes me really happy. Now this one, I'm experimenting by adding it just to the bottom. Big old glob, letting it you know, spread on its own. And then these little crystal molds, just adding it in in one area. Again, trying to get like a gentle spread. You never know what's going to happen until you try. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it, you could also at this point add like some different flakes and things. Uh, and now I'm, I'm using every little bit of what was in this cup. So I'm actually scraping the cup out with the craft stick and moving it into these really nice pink silicone molds. And again, just getting a little bit of a blend going. But I hate to waste any resin, so I'm constantly like, uh, whenever I'm doming cabs, I'll have some molds off to the side that way I can still get, um, you know, I just have something immediately right there. I don't have to get up and go get it. It's, you know, right on hand. Sorry for the traffic noises in the background. So now I'm going to go through again with the heat gun, trying really hard to keep the cord out of everything. And I'm just going to, you can see, maybe, those little bubbles start popping. There they go. Starting on the pink mold. And with these ones, I feel like I can blow a little harder, um, like let the airflow hit for longer. The silicone molds hold up wonderfully to the heat. I don't want to burn the resin because these heat guns get hot. Um, but it's like you can kind of focus the air on it a bit more to get some of the deeper bubbles out, which I found can be necessary when I'm reaching the end of my pot time. Which, uh, for those of y'all who are new to this, pot time is just the term for how long you can leave something, like it's work time. You know how long you can keep working with it before it starts setting up here i'm going through for a second hit on these cabs with the heat gun to make sure there are no bubbles trapped hey everybody it is the following morning it's only been about 12 hours but um it demolded pretty safely i typically don't pull things out of the mold until at least 24 hours uh, with the art and glow but i just for science, you know, I, I really wanted to see how this one came out. And it's not exactly how I planned, but not bad for, you know, bottom of the barrel resin at the end of a pour. Um, now, what I think is really cool about the tape, and I hope you can see clearly, is typically whenever I'm just working on the silicone and I've cast a resin piece and it overflows because sometimes. Uh, my table's not as level as I'd like it to be or the cabochon itself isn't very level and so it'll just have a tendency to kind of like drip off sometimes. Whenever it's on to the silicone it peels off very easily but it's all still quite stuck to the cab. Whereas right here you can see we had some 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 issues <laughs> and so you can see like we actually have like a whole section of cabs that are stuck together. Now it sticks hella crazy to the plastic and you can see these are to the tape and these pull off quite easily now I'm being really careful to not to try to not you know stick my fingernail or anything into it or leave any fingerprints 
but um, it's I really need to free my workspace up for more projects. So coming through, it actually peels right off. So you can see, especially where it goes super thin, coming around to the back side. So it'll stick to the tape as opposed to our cabs. And I'm just clearing off the, the pieces around as well. So that maybe you can see, but yeah. See how it's stuck to the tape and not to the cab? <laughs> I feel like it's like a melts in your mouth, melt in your hand. Um, But yeah, so I'm just going to take it and peels off right like that. And that's such a nice, tidy cleanup compared to whenever it all sticks to the silicone. And I go through with like scissors and I have to like sand it down and stuff. It just, I don't know why it does it like that. This is the only batch I've done where it's doing it like this. But I will take it where I can get it. This really makes my life a lot easier. You can see, sorry, I don't mean to put my hand in the way. It's just peeling right out sometimes it might take a few crumbs of the polymer clay backing with it but for the most part I think it does a pretty good job and then I just continue on through removing the cabochons from the tape which it really for me made a big difference having it stuck to the tape um, it just there was no shifting sometimes especially for the smaller ones they don't you know stay still when I'm trying to spread the resin around so I really like doing it and here's another one that you can kind of see I can actually pull this whole piece up so you can see how it leaked in between and I'm just taking it and just breaking it off and peeling towards the back and again just peeling like that and there we go <laughs> you can still go through and sand down the edging and stuff if you want um, but I'm getting these guys moved over into just a banker box uh, and then I stack these over onto a shelf and I'll let them cure for another day or two um, and then start wire wrapping or packaging them up for my patreon craft crates or any of those different things but you can kind of see here some of the really cool different effects and I'm actually going to wait until they're completely cured so that I can show you guys in much better lighting but so that'll be the next step and I'll, I'll see you guys I guess in about however long like 12 hours <laughs> so this is how they came out after the resin finished curing we have some that were stencils with mica powder we have some German glass <clears throat> domed with the resin just on some scrap clay. This one here is one of our smush cabs, which that domed up really nicely. The red and then the green one, like a lot of these have alcohol inks, which uh, with the art and glow after a few days of letting the re uh, alcohol ink dry, didn't run or anything. This one was just some marbled scrap clay. <laughs> so you can see that uh, the camera didn't really pick up on the metallic color shifts and stuff. Yeah, this one was the one with the stencil. It has some dust on it from being outside. But I just, I, I'll do a tutorial showing how I did that one because it was a lot of fun. This is one of my uh, Lumiere color, like halo paints. I did some with the folk art color shift paints. But again, my camera's like, no, the shine is too much. I will not pick up on the. So sorry for it being blurry. But man, these came out. Like, I could not have even anticipated how beautiful these came out. I'm so excited. And for those of y'all who are my patrons for the craft crates, um, you can expect to see some of these uh, in your, uh, whether you're wire wrapping, chain mail, or whatever, uh, you can expect to see some of these snuck in there because I'm so excited to share them with you guys. And now this one's just done with a translucent opal clay uh, with the little, you know, a holographic, like, opalescent um flakes mixed in this is another one of the folk art and lumiere color shift cabs so again that the the resin gives it such a nice wet look and this one i never thought i would like a, a hot pink background but i liked it a lot more than i thought i would and then this one it follows along with my green onyx tutorial showing how to use translucent clays and alcohol inks 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me for this tutorial. I really hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook and all of my social media links and Patreon links will be down in the video description so you can tag me in your work so that I can see what you're up to um, as well as follow along with some of our antics here at Back to Earth Creations. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, uh, if you're interested in getting some of these cabochons or supporting our channel even further, please consider becoming a patron. Y'all make so much happen for us and I can't express my gratitude. So I'm going to keep trying my best. Sorry, I keep pointing over here because that's where the computer is. Um, and I'm editing this video as I speak. But um, y'all make so much happen for us and I'm going to keep trying my best to give back to y'all as much as possible but I just feel really overwhelmed with y'all's generosity and kindness and just that you're here watching my videos uh, commenting learning from me d teaching me what you've learned like you guys blow my mind all the time so thank you so much for that and until next time happy crafting oh yeah and also there should be some stuff popping up on the screen magic <laughs> but um that's you can subscribe to my channel you can check out my vlog and you can maybe watch another video if future vaughn figures out how to edit stuff so bye guys happy crafting give yourselves a big hug from me Mwah! bye <laughs>